All right. Well, good morning. Buenos dias. How you doing, Eric? Hey, man. How are you? Great to be with you again. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming back and talking with me. Um, so this last episode is going to be focused on the, the last of the three things that I originally brought up when I first started this video blog on transition. Um, and the last piece is education. Uh, so last time we talked about um, doing your education post-military service, and that's kind of where you came in with your expertise. Uh, but today, I kind of wanted to talk about completing your education while you're on active duty and, and the challenges that come with that and the excuses that come along with that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's definitely something that you're going to have a lot more insight on as I was a slacker and uh, didn't do as much as I should have during that. So I think what would be good is to give, you know, the listeners and viewers a little bit of context on, on your own situation is can you explain to everyone, you know, your background and, and kind of your path to where you ended up, you know, right now through the military? Yeah. So uh, I would just, I want to say I started my education in like 2008. Um, we had just finished a jump op. Uh, when I was with 1st Raider Battalion, and I was talking with this guy, he was a sergeant, and I was a sergeant at the same time, and he was like, hey man, are, are you doing any of your civilian education? And I was like, no, I honestly hadn't even thought about it. And he's like, why not? He's like, you, you get, you're passing up $4,500 a year, um, so why don't you uh, take advantage of that? Like, what are you going to do when you get out? And at that point in time in my career, I, I'd only been in, I think I'd only been in like eight years by that point seven, eight years by that point. And honestly, I had never even thought about it. Like it just never even crossed my mind. I was too busy deploying, going to schools, having a good time, you know, um, spending my time out at the bars um, mm -hmm. and uh, surfing. So it just wasn't a priority in my life until he said, and that's, and that's all it took was that one conversation. And within the next week, I was already starting my first class with uh, American Military University. Yeah, no, and that's, I think that's a really critical point that you just said right there is how little it really takes to motivate someone to, to just start it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think if I remember correctly, it took you a long time to get through that bachelor's degree. And I think a lot of people are kind of intimidated by that length. But, you know, if you're doing it, you know, depending on your op tempo, obviously you might not have as much time as other MOSs do and all that. But, I think what a lot of guys need to understand is take your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no yeah. real limit to how long it may take you, depending on your degree and all that. So can you explain, you know, your initial concept and when you found out, man, this might take a while, but, you know, let me just keep grinding at it. Dude, I knew immediately that it was going to take me a long time. Yeah. I was like just under a 3.0 student in high school. Um, I was very intimidated by jumping back into my education after high school, um, I knew it was going to take me a long time. And you know what it did? It took me 10 years, almost 10 years to finish my undergrad uh, in business management. Um, in between deployments, um, I did a tour on the drill field as a drill instructor. So obviously the only time that I had to do school while I was doing that while, while I was on quota at the pool. Um, and then I got to for, uh, second recon after that. And, you know, I would be up at night doing algebra homework after jumping all day at a HAO package, you know, so while the boys are going out and having themselves a good time, I'm back in the pack shed, you know, cranking away at my education. So I just, I identified and found gaps um, in my career to get it done. Um, sometimes it was, it was very, very challenging where I would have to take two classes at a time just to get it in. Um, and, but the, the thing is, is it's, it's an, uh, you're eating an elephant, right? Like, and how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is what uh, I would like to convey to all the service members out there is, is that this is not going to be a short process. You're not going to be able, especially if you're in a job like, like we have done, um, you're just not going to have the time. Um, so you got to find the time. Yeah. So, you know, I'll play Joe Snuffy and a Buck Sergeant here, you know, because yeah. I remember what I was thinking is like, hey, 
I want to be out with the boys drinking. I don't want to do that. So what was, what was your big motivator? You know what I mean? So I'm sure it was a few things, but if you can nail down three things that, you know, really got you to keep doing it and to maybe say, Hey, I'm not going to go out and spend money out in the bar right now. Was it because you always wanted to be a college graduate or was it because you want a career progression or what would you say was your big motivator? I'd say that my biggest motivator was that knowing that this career was going to end at some point and then what? Like, so I think once you cross like your 10 year mark, like, like when you did, like yeah. you start thinking about like, what is going to be next? What am I going to do next? Um, but I would say the biggest push for me and a quick story. Um, when I checked into San Diego as a first sergeant, been there a couple of weeks, I had a sergeant major. Um, who had who'd only been in San Diego for two years, came there from Okinawa, right? And like the second he hit um, his two years on station, the monitor gave him orders to the East Coast. So I come in, he's all stressed <laughs> out. You know, he's like, man, I've only been here two years. Yeah. My wife's got a good job. My kids are in high school. I own a house. And the monitor just gave me orders. And I'm like, all right, well, call him back and tell him you don't want to take him. And he's like, well, I can't do that. I'm like, well, why not? He's like, well, I'm at 22 years. These orders are for four months from now. So if I deny the orders, I have to get out. I'm like, well, so what? Like, then get out. Who cares? And he's like, well, I'm not ready. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not, you're not ready? And I was like, don't you have anything to like fall back on? Like, you should finish your school. Like, I'm, almost, I'm getting, I'm working on mine right now. He's like, no. And he's like, he looked at me like, like, like I was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> who's had the time for that? And I was in like my Charlies, you know, my service uniform. So I was wearing all my ribbons and stuff. I'm like, huh, I've had the time. Yeah. So, dude, that made me realize, like, if I don't get this done, I am going to be a slave to the system. So eventually, and you know, as I do, I know the army is kind of the same way. Eventually, you and the institution are not going to see eye to eye. Um, and wouldn't you know it? You know, two years later, I was in the same boat as that sergeant major, like, except I was prepared. So my conversation with the monitor was very, very different. Like he had zero leverage over me whatsoever because I had options. So that one conversation that I had two years ago, or well, three years ago now, really lit the fire under me to get this done. And I'm so happy that I did. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> in SF, they make things really cush for, you. you know, you stay at one duty station. I mean, I was on Bragg for 12 years, you know, and the lifestyle is great. You know what I mean? Well, the non-deployable lifestyle, obviously you're gone training, you know, and your, your redeployment, your dwell time is really short. So you're not really in Bragg. But life is good, you know, and, and back to what you were saying, I almost, I think in my, in my stance was, I don't want to even think about doing anything differently. And if I go ahead and start thinking about what's going to be on the outside of SF, like maybe that would bring the, the end more near. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I really was loving life and was loving my career so much that I was kind of lost in the fun of it, you know, yeah. and I didn't want it to end. And I think there's a lot of guys out there, especially in special forces and any real special operations community, you know, being able to be the mature one and realize that there's an end coming. You know what I mean? I was well on my way to continue my career and all that. And, you know, having the surgery that paralyzed my arm right then and there, I was like, holy crap, I got a year yeah. to figure out what I'm going to do. And I was like, darn it. Why had I not done college? You know, this whole time, you know, I should have yeah. done it and I did it. And, you know, I just think it's really impressive and uh, people can learn a lot from, you know, where your mindset was and how you ended up doing that. So what school did you go to? What program did you actually study? And why did you choose those two uh, in conjunction? Um, so I started off at American Military University. It's strictly an online platform. And I did that just because of the flexibility for my schedule. Um, I started off in poli-sci. And um, my SAR major, who, who was working towards his MBA um, when I was at Second Recon, he was like, bro, what are you, you going to do with that? And I was like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm just interested in politics. Like, he's like, well, you're going to be a poli sci like teacher in high school or you're going to be a lawyer or something. I'm like, no. 
And uh, he said, why don't you go the business route? And like the next day I switched um, to business management. Um, so I figured it was to be the most applicable to like my military skills and leadership and things like that. That some of that stuff would would transfer over into that industry. Obviously, I would have to start over in the business world when I got out, but at least I would come to the table with something. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I discovered the Masters in Business for Veterans program. I was I, honestly, I was looking at the Executive MBA program because it was going to be here in Carlsbad, where, right where I live. Um, and then I stumbled upon that program, and then I discovered that I knew a lot of guys. Uh, a lot of guys from like Marsoc uh, when I was there that had gone through the program and they all raved about it. Um, so I, that was around the time that I roped you into it yeah. um, <laughs> when I went up for my informational session and I posted online that I was at USC and then you'd hit me up. So what was it like for you when you saw me like uh, go in that direction? Well, so obviously super stoked for you, you know, and I actually had a buddy in cohort six, uh, Lou Marrera. And when we were going through transition, he was getting out, he was still out here in Texas. Um, he was going through the program too. So I knew of it, you know, I didn't know all the details. I didn't know how it could fit into my schedule. And so obviously you said that you were applying for it. And I was like, okay, hold on. Let me, let me get some more details on this. Yeah. And luckily it worked out. You know, but back back to the, um, the figuring out a major, you know what I mean? And I think that was one of the big reasons why I didn't do college, you know, while I was in, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, yeah. it's like, hey, I'm going to dedicate all this time to something. I'm not even sure if I'm going to like it. You know, I don't know how this is going to apply to what I may be doing when I get out. You know, so I would encourage people to really look at business as well. You know, my undergrad was in geographic information science, you know, GIS stuff, you know which is cool. It's really something that I was interested in. And as an 18 echo communication sergeant, I thought that could apply to a job on the outside, you know, and, and it does, you know, but the, the jobs are limited. And a lot yeah. of the security jobs in that field are in DC, Virginia, back at Bragg, you know, which I don't want to go to or Tampa, you know, so I think that business is the perfect, you know, well-rounded degree that veterans can really use going any route after after uh the military service so you know the nbv program as soon as you showed that to me and we went out to the informational send uh the informational session i said this is it this is perfect you know i'll be able to apply all my experience to it so yeah. i would really encourage people to really look at one getting your bachelor's degree maybe focus on business or something that's a little more well-rounded yeah, dude, absolutely. And, you know, one thing I want to say before I forget is, uh, you know, it's not all about college. Like, you don't have to do that. Like, while you're still in, start identifying what you want to do. I had a corporal. Um, he knew he wanted to get out and be a, an electrician. So before he got out, he was using um, his tuition assistance for all of his, like, certs that he needed. Trade schools and all that. Yeah. So, like, he got out and he went to, like, the main school um, here in California. And last I heard, man, he's crushing it um, because he's one of like four or five electricians in his like little town that he lives in. So like he's got a business going. Um, so it's not all about just going to college. If that's not your thing, I, I totally get it. Um, but there's other avenues that you can explore the education. So the education is a bigger realm than just the university side uh, of getting your bachelor's and, and your master's or, or whatever. Yeah, that, that's a good. That's a good question too. You know, I, then the last video I brought up the military joint service transcript and how you can apply credits towards something. You know, if I was someone that was interested in doing a trade, you know, welding or you know, electricians or plumbing or something like that, I would also encourage you guys to go into S one and see what trade schools if credit can be applied towards those trade schools as well. Because I'm not sure if it can or not. That's a darn good question that probably needs to be answered for a lot of a lot of soldiers and Marines out there for sure. Yeah, man. So, you know, like, like you said in the beginning, like like what, what was one of the reasons that you didn't um, start pursuing your education early? Like what was what like I know you thought about it at some point, like while you were in. But like like what was like going through your head when you were when you were thinking about it? You know, war warfare was on my mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> It took me, I went the long way through our uh, Q course. So it took me a little over two years to actually get through it. So all I wanted to do was deploy and go to combat. Yeah. 
You know I mean, all the instructors are like, hey, the war's about to be over. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. <laughs> you know, and we're like, no, no. And um, so our, really our op tempo was, was uh, there was a lot going on. You know what I mean? In five, in my first five years, I deployed four times, you know, so it was really, as soon as I got back, it was, Hey, what schools can I go to to make myself, you know, more lethal and my team have a little more survivability. So, you know, it was always on the back of my head. College was that thing that I knew that I needed to do or that I wanted to do. Just at that time, um, I wasn't focused on that at all. I was focused on how I can make my team better, you know, and all that. But as things started slowing down, I want to say in like the 2014, 2015 timeframe, yeah. um, I definitely was starting to look at it. You know, I started researching what universities might be good. I know Fayetteville Technical Community College had some good programs for veterans, but yeah. I just didn't, I didn't bite on it for some reason. And it's one of my big regrets. You know, if I could have at least just started a course and got some college credits, then I would have shortened my time getting my bachelor's degree, you know, exponentially. Yeah. And so I had four years or whatever of GI Bill and not figuring out what major I really wanted to do. I changed my major probably four times, five times in my first year. Honestly, it was such a waste of time. Yeah. And so, you know, one, just be responsible and think about what can happen to you. You know what I mean? You're not invincible. You know what I mean? Something bad can happen either at your fault or not your fault. And you have to have that backup plan. You know, and it's kind of contrary to all my training as well. It's like, hey, why didn't I come up with a contingency plan if this career somehow ended shortly? Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's a big regret. Yeah, dude. I am so happy that 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 I had the people that injected themselves into my life the time that they did and got me thinking about this a long time ago because it allowed me to make that decision at the end. You know, like when, you know, I was selected for Sergeant Major the monitor is trying to send me to, you know, uh, first bed, bath and beyond battalion on the inside, <laughs> you know, and I was not down for that at all. And it allowed me the freedom of choice um, mm -hmm. that I didn't have to take those orders and that I could get out and pursue the things that I wanted to do um, with my life. Um, and, you know, one thing that you, that you talked about, like, yeah, I totally get it, man. Like we were in during a freaking great time. Um, deployments and you know schools and it was just nonstop. It was awesome. It was best time of my life for sure. Um, you know, but as things were drying down, you're right, man. I was I, as a as a company first sergeant. You know, I was sitting in the office counseling my recondos or my drill instructors, and just being like, "Hey, man, like, why aren't you going to school? Oh, I don't have the time. Oh, you don't." So let's uh, let's dissect your daily schedule, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. what time do you wake up in the morning? <laughs> oh, for I wake up at like six. Okay, so you wake up at five then. So that's an hour. You know, how, how long do you get you get for chow? Oh, you know, I'm usually taking about an hour and a half. Okay, so do you really need an hour and a half to eat eat chow? Okay, so you you know, thirty minutes. You know, so there's another hour. Now we're now we're at, we're at two hours. I bet. You've got a subscription to Netflix, don't you? And you're just <laughs> piling through seasons of whatever. Um, you know, so there, you know, there was an hour, two hours right there. So four hours of the day that you could be dedicating towards your schoolwork, uh, towards bettering yourself. And it's not just for bettering yourself if you um if you get out, but like say you make a full career of it, right? Like you do 30 years and you're now like the CENTCOM sergeant major, right? And you have a uh, a bachelor's degree in business management and a master's in like international studies. So when you're combing through, you know, national security strategy, national security uh, policy, like you can, you can retain that information and now speak intelligently about it. So now as the CENTCOM Sergeant Major or, or Command Sergeant Major, if you're an army guy, like you can be value added to that commander now. Uh, you, you, you can, uh, read what is being said and what the, the, the direction the nation wants to go in. And you can convey that both up and down the chain of command. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think a big thing with what you're saying too, is, you know, you can always find that time. Like you mentioned, you can find four hours to knock it out. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is it doesn't take that much time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can just do 30 minutes to an hour of work a day and break that up, you know, and I think there's an intimidation factor 
for a lot of people because they're like, man, I'm going to have to dedicate so much of my time towards this. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if it, if the, you know, the weight of that is beneficial to me, but yeah. it doesn't take that much time in a day just to block off a period of time and, and knock something out for 45 minutes. You can get a lot done if you stay, uh, you know, focused on something for 45 minutes. Yeah, dude. It's all, it's all about like what the priority is. Like if that's, if that's a priority, um, I get it. Like, you know, the whole time I was going to school, I had, you know, I had two kids, uh, married, you know, family has demands on my time. My Marines, sailors had demands on my time. Um, but hey, kids go to bed at eight o'clock and, you know, I'd be up till 10 o'clock, you know, jamming away. Um, so yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I know that, um, I know that this, this, this video blog was a little bit longer than, uh, than, than the, all the others. But uh, I feel that um, we were able to expound on a lot more uh, issues and, and uh, from the feedback that you got, the guys wanted it to be a little bit longer. So, uh, so yeah, there, there it is. So yeah, go ahead and uh, yeah, uh, wrap up the last and, point, brother. Yeah. Whoever is uh, watching this or listening to this, you know, throw out a, a topic, you know, that you think some of your soldiers or Marines might be interested in. And uh, let us know, and we can expand on that as much as you want. And uh, no, it's been fun, man. Absolutely, we should do it again. Yeah, absolutely, Eric. Uh, dude, I, I really appreciate your time uh, for coming out and, and talking uh, on your side of the things and, and the things that you were thinking about when you were active duty. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into the MBV program a little bit and try and coax some people over to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is uh, this wrap up uh, the next episode of the Morning Stoke. Uh, if you like what you saw, please uh, uh, put give us a like, throw a comment in there, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll keep pushing out good information. And uh, maybe next time we'll, we'll add another person to the mix. Right on. Later, brother.